To be honest, every analytics tool looks scary at the first time. Which kind of events should I track? How do I analyze data? What should I do with the data? So many questions. I have a list of 10 things that you should keep in mind before you actually even start to do anything. These are my 10 things that you should know before you get started with Mixpanel. Number one, ownership. I guess you are the one who is introducing Mixpanel. Maybe you are the one who has introduced Mixpanel, or maybe you are the ones who are on the sideline and hope to do more with Mixpanel. Doesn't really matter. There's one thing which is the most important learning that I had over the years. You need one person at least to be in charge with the tool. What does it mean? It's like, it's basically like owning a house or owning a flat. So you keep it tidy, you keep it up and working, you do some maintenance work and so on. So you just make sure that everything looks nice and is functional. And that's the same with your Mixpanel account. So when you are the person, well, congratulations, you have a lot of responsibility in your hand. But it's really important that you be aware of it because... You are the one who is responsible that everyone who is working with the tool has the best experience possible. And this includes a lot of things. So you make the decision which kind of events are going in there, which are available for reports, who gets access, in which kind of way, which spaces do you need, so how do you configure it, all the different kind of things. But the most important thing is like, feel the ownership for this. This is your thing. You are responsible how good it works. And how good the adoption is. But this is something I really want you to understand. And related to that, we have to talk about something which is not totally visible. We have to talk about the lexicon or the data management in general. So if you click on this really nice button here up here, uh, which is called data management, um, then you will see you have a lexicon. The lexicon is your most important place. Why is it? Because it has all the events and all the properties and all the different kind of formulas that you are working with in one place. And it gives you the ability to check which kind of events are coming in. You can check who is using these kind of things. And you can even add descriptions. You can change the display name and so on. So as we talked about ownership, this is the place where you can improve the data user experience. You are basically the master over which kind of events people can select for their analysis, how do you name them, and which kind of description can be really helpful for them. This is super important that you keep a look in there and also like that you make sure that no stuff ends up there and is visible to the users that you don't want them to see. So then I think something which is always a little bit scary when you work with tools like Mixpanel it's basically nothing here. So you get started, you log in. Yes, Mixpanel now has this new kind of reports that are basically getting generated out of the box, which is called like a starter board. It's good, so it gives you some kind of idea which kind of reports you can create, but still, it's on purpose. These tools are not like Google Analytics where you have all these standard created reports because the most important thing about event analytics or product analytics is like, you have to have a clear idea what you actually want to get out of the data and then you go in there and then you build something for that to figure this out. But it always starts with your question. It never starts with a standard report somewhere. What you have to know. First of all, you have to know which kind of business function you are supporting. So you have to have an idea what your go-to-market model is. So is sales basically driving the revenue? Is marketing driving the revenue or is product driving the revenue. So whoever it is, these are the first people you need to talk to to understand what kind of event data, what kind of behavioral data is interesting for them to, in the end, create more sales or to be more effective. So this is where you can get started. Understand how revenue is generated on your platform and who is influencing it, these are the people you can help. And then try to understand what kind of problems are they trying to solve. And this gives you already a good kind of hint which kind of data you can collect and then which kind of analysis you can run for them. This is where you can start. And from there, you can develop these kind of questions that they might already have. It's always connect 
to the business. Of course, you might have stuff as well. So you come across, so you work on your product, you think, oh, it would be really interesting to see which kind of, let's say, specific kind of user group behaves, for example, in the onboarding. That's great. If you already have the kind of data, go ahead, make an analysis, try to figure something out. If you really have to invest into data collection, make sure that it aligns with the business goals. If, for example, onboarding at the moment doesn't even have any kind of priority, well, I wouldn't focus on that. Next one. Understand the event collection or aka tracking or however you want to call it. So you have to understand how to get the event data and the user data into Mixpanel. And in the end, technically, it's not so complicated. So you use an SDK. SDK is like let's call it a program, that your developers will implement wherever you send the events from. So you can send them from the front end, so from your website, from your application front end, from your mobile devices, or you can send it from the back end. There are SDKs for that as well. There are pros and cons between both, and we should not cover it here. Events can be sent in from any kind of place. And in the end, you just have two core functions, how to send stuff. The first one is the track function. Track function means... I track an event. So you say, I want to track something. So you define a name and you define properties for this event. Properties give context to the events. They explain a little bit. So for example, when I click on account created as an event, I have an event account created. So I could put in there like the sign up provider. So if it was per email or using um, Google sign in, or I could put in there the email domain because like, it might be interesting for me to lock the logos. This is the track function. The second one is identify. Identify, I can identify a user. So I can assign, for example, if someone logs in, I can take the user ID that I get from the backend and I can send it to Mixpanel to identify this user and later find it and connect it with the data that I have in my backend, which is really nice. And I can also set user properties with the identify call. Also very helpful. So I can send, for example, on which subscription this user is. Then some questions that I ask users during onboarding, I can send there as well. Later, I can use this for filter and for creating powerful cohorts. Speaking about po cohorts, learn about the power of constructed events or cohorts. This is definitely a pro topic, but I definitely want to leave it here already, like that you have the back in your head. You can collect events and you will collect events. This is super important. This is the foundation. But sometimes you have specific kind of events which are built on the events that you already track. So to give you an example, so maybe you want to identify the one time when people actually really feel for the first time the value of your product. So if we take the case of Miro, so this might be, for example, when someone is sharing a board. It could but also be like that we say, no, look, it's also like a valuable experience when, they, when we see that they have at least like added, I don't know, let's say 20 or more things to the board. And so this is a signal for us that it's working. So these are actually two events. But in the end, we want to put something on top so we can analyze it. So in Mixpanel, we can create a cohort for that. And so cohort means like put all the people into this cohort who either share the board or added 20 or more assets to a board in the last seven days. And with this cohort, this cohort behaves like an event. So you can do all the different kind of analyzes with this like you do with the other stuff as well. So keep it in mind. It's not like that you collect events, you can also construct events. And it's a very powerful concept and I might make a lot more videos about this or I should really do this, but just keep it in your head. You cannot just collect events, you can also construct some. Then keep in mind, not too many events. Too many events, and I'm speaking here, everything beyond 50 event names is a serious danger to your data user experience. Why is that? It's pretty simple. Just let's define a report. So you define a report, you can click here to select an event. And so here you can see, I just have, I think eight events or so. It's pretty straightforward to find the right one, which I should get started. Let's assume you see 100 here. Unless you have to find the right stuff here from 100 events. This is one problem. People will really have a hard time to find the right event to make an analysis. The second one is basically monitoring and maintenance. You want to make sure that these 100 events that are triggered are triggered in the right way because stuff can happen. You have a new deployment, someone's um, messing things up and the event is not tracked properly anymore. Maybe it's even not stopping just like 
it's still sending data, but it's sending data in the wrong way. And so you cannot really catch up with this. This is a huge problem. The easiest solution to that is be careful with new events. So always make sure that this new event actually really provides a value to the business and not just to the person who's asking for it. So always keep in mind, just introduce an event that helps the business to improve their processes, make more money or save some costs. Another thing, train and evangelize. We talked about ownership. One part of ownership is like you own that people are using this platform as much as possible. So one part of your job is like to understand your audience within your company, why they don't use the tool, why they maybe struggle. Also, you have to understand where some people exhale by using a lot of this tool and make really, really great use cases. You have to understand these because this gives you something that you can tell the other people to say, hey, look, this is something we can achieve with you too. If you own this tool, you also own the usage of this tool. And so there's no excuse when people say, yeah, I, I don't know, it's not really the right tool. And I ask them, okay, what did you do for training and, and adoption? And there was not really so much in place. This has to be in place. Only when you train people a lot and the adoption is good and then people struggling heavily, you might have an indicator that you're on the wrong tool. When this is not in place, invest into training and evangelizing. Learn and know about the, the user tab. So the user tab is something that can give you a lot of insights. It looks a little bit strange because like in the end, well, I see all the users here. Is it really helpful to do this? Yes, it is. Because like when you ever click on a user profile, you can actually see for one user a sequence of events. This is a super valuable tool to understand micro patterns. Also to debug things. So it might be that you have a tracking issue. So for example, maybe at some point people get redirected to a different kind of, let's say, part of your service it changes the website and let's say the tracking is broken the identity is not passed on so what you will see in the user profile is you always see journeys who stop at the same point and start at the other same point so, so this gives you an immediately an indicator that you have a technical problem here user explorer is a very important report to always go in and check and see okay does it actually make sense if you see sequences on a user level you immediately get the feeling if the tracking is working properly because sometimes you can even have this that one event is fired before another which should never be fired before the other so it's a great place to understand if you have to tidy up, if your maintenance work is due. So know about the user tab and check it at least one or two times a month. Finally, I mean, these were eight things already. I hope that were not too scary because I didn't want it to scare you off. I just wanted to make you aware of these to have a good start. And here comes the most important part. Have a lot of fun with this. I mean, yes, I said, yeah, you have to own it and so on. I'm pretty serious about this, but in the end, working with this kind of data can be huge fun, definitely. If you don't feel the fun, figure out why not, which things have to be fixed, and then fix the things. You have to have fun to make these kind of analyzes, because I can tell you if, you, if I have a good setup and so on, I have huge fun to stay in this tool for the whole day and check all the different kind of things that are really helpful. Find these things, and also if you have a good setup, and you have fun to make the analyzer, but you're frustrated that basically your results are not getting the response from the other business teams. Figure out what they need. You have to connect to them. You will always find a place how you can connect better to a marketing team, to a growth team, to a sales team and so on. Just talk to them, figure out what they need, and then you can provide it. And I can tell you, this is the biggest fun possible. You make an analysis, you create a cohort, you sync up the cohort to the marketing tool that the marketing is, uh, is working in, and on Monday morning you meet someone from the marketing team and they tell you like, that's so great, the kind of audience that you just gave us. On Friday we already set up a uh, test workflow to run some messages with this kind of um, audience. And it looks really promising, what we can see here. These are the things you want to have every kind of week. So look for these, have fun, and have a lot of fun to work with this.
And now you can look into funnels retention and all the other kind of stuff. Okay, these were the 10 things that I definitely want you to know before you get started with Mixpanel. Let me know in the comment if you have any kind of other questions and make sure that you subscribe to the channel because I have definitely a long backlog of more videos about event analytics that will drop here in the next months.